Hello, this is Greg from Gospel Music University, and today's lesson, uh, I actually got a request from a student, uh, Antonio, and he said, hey Greg, what's up with this old Milton Brunson tune called It's Gonna Rain? I'm particularly concerned about what's going on in the introduction to that song, and actually he's taking us back to 1982 gospel and so like i said i'm here to help you guys i didn't quite know we were going back that far but you know it is what it is but there is something to be learned in that particular introduction to it's gonna rain and there are a couple of chords um that are in there and that are really heavily used and i'm going to break uh down what's going on first and then i'm going to show you the practical application for this progression how it's used where it's coming from and what else we can do uh to use because it's it's really a, a common progression and one of the ones that we need to get into our, our permanent vocabularies and be a part of our memory arsenal and let's kind of look at it and let's dissect it uh pretty much as we transcribe it when you hear this introduction played by many uh keyboardists even back in 82 when the song came out um everybody had a slightly different interpretation they had this the right harmony and the right chords but you might hear some rhythmical variations because it's kind of a cascading arpeggiated kind of kind of concept and you hear some things differently but i'm gonna give you the gist of what's going on in my interpretations and this is pretty close to what actually what's going on in the city it may be a, uh excuse me <laughs> maybe even not a cd maybe even a cassette tape because the uh i i couldn't even find the original uh uh, recording another song. You two have a couple out there. One of them is in the key of A and another choir is doing in A flat. I'm not sure, but actually I'm teaching this one in A flat uh, to make it simple and more practical. So, the couple of chords that we're looking at in this whole thing. And we'll look at it and uh, the bass line. Goes from A flat to G flat to F to E. That's the bass line. Okay. And then we have a couple of chords. And uh, we're going to start with a C2 chord on top. So that's what's going on in the right hand. So the left hand. So I'm just actually taking that C2 chord right there. Uh, and that's just an inverted chord. And I'm actually playing uh, a melodic line with it. I'm breaking that chord up. Okay, then then we have another C2 chord here, but it's just kind of inverted. It's, it's so if you look at what's going on here, then it goes to G flat in the bass. So the second chord in the right hand. Okay, again. This G flat. So the next chord. And here again we're still in that C that C two category. Actually, excuse me, that's an actual D flat two. Then to the E in the root. So again. Excuse me. Then you're going to change the octaves. So here are the chords. Chord number one. Okay. The left hand is in blue. The right hand is in red. Chord number two. Okay. Chord number two and chord number three. Then chord number four is the same chord here in the right hand, but the left hand changes. So first chord, and that's an A flat two chord with A flat in the bass. Okay. First chord one. Chord two. Chord three and chord four. 
Again, real slow. Chord one. Chord two. Chord three. Chord four. And we just have to take those chords and, and create that melody. So that's actually what's going on in, in the introduction. You may hear some different varieties. Uh, you may hear a couple of octave things going on from the original tracks, but same bass harmony on that. So that'll actually get you through the introduction. Uh, I'm not quite sure what you want to do with it. Uh, and and I guess choirs are still doing that song. Interesting. So let's look at uh let's look at uh some of the harmonic analysis of this song and how can we learn from this progression and what can we do with it. Okay, practically uh the practicality of that progression is just a variation of the bass progression. We need to be able to hear again the basic concept of that progression. And it's an A flat chord, okay, and then it goes to an A flat seven with a G flat in the root. And then it goes to a D flat chord with an F in the root. Then it goes to a B minor seven flat five with an E in the root. And uh, B minor seven flat five, the E is actually the fifth of the chord, so it's the fifth of that chord of the root. So here's here's the concept. Okay, A flat chord, A flat seven with a G flat in the root, D flat chord with the F in the root. Excuse me, right here. And the B minor seven flat five with the inner root. Uh, another name for the uh, B minor seven flat five is the B half diminished. So, and this is a good chord to practice because this is something that you hear in gospel. Because and this is a progression. This is a progression that we hear all the time in gospel music. So this is one of those patterns that is a good concept to go practice in all the 12 keys. And it's a real simple one. Okay, and then, you know, take it up real easy. begin to you know once you learn these progressions experiment with them you know uh let's see what we can do with it i mean it could be talk music you know talk music is just here again progressions that we break down we slow down we play around with the melody we slow the chord we arpeggiate it and we come up with some different ideas so you know even if we did that same And maybe even use it to write a song. So uh, when we learn songs, you know, my my base for covering gospel studies is learning patterns and progressions that we need to know as contemporary music artists. And this is a this is one of those patterns that we'll be using. Uh, you may hear variations of this pattern, but this is definitely a. Uh, one pattern that uh you know it does there are a lot of modern options to it you know you'll hear a lot of different varieties of that So begin to experiment with that one. Uh, so Antonio, that's the that's the lick, that's the pattern that we went over for you. 
that's one of the applications to learn the bass progressions and all the keys because it's a sound you need to get in your ear and one that you'll probably be needing again uh, in some other song. So until next time, if they say you had to be gifted to play gospel, pop, jazz, R&B, or neo soul, evidently they don't know my secret. This is Greg Hanna with more keyboards, tips, tricks, and more from gospelmusicuniversity.com. <laughs>